All right, so I bought this fan for my PlayStation 5, hoping I could find something at a decent price to help keep my very hard to acquire unit running at a cool temperature and ensuring uh, longevity. However, uh, upon watching a video on YouTube, I'll put the description in the link, I found uh, a gentleman did a video explaining how these fans are pointing the wrong direction and this thing is quite useless. wish I would have watched his uh, review before I bought it, but with that being said, this thing was about 12 bucks, so it's not that big of a deal. So I'm going to plug it in, show you guys which way the fans are really running, and then we're going to see if we can take this thing apart, flip the fans around the opposite direction, and maybe uh, cut some of these holes out a little bit better so that you get some more airflow, truly allowing the PlayStation 5 to breathe. So basically all I did is I just plugged a uh, USB power adapter here into the USB port on the back that plugs into the back of the PS5 for power. Plug it in there. Let's go ahead and plug it in here. This unit's really loud too. It's probably hard to hear uh, in the garage here, but I got a piece of tissue paper here so you can see. Let's let it ramp up a little bit. I think in the video the guy did a RPM test. He's way more advanced than me, but I think these things are running like 9,000 RPMs or something like that when they get up to speed. So once it gets up, you can see that basically this thing snaps on the back of the PlayStation 5 and the idea is for it to suck air out of the back of the PlayStation, thus creating a cooler atmosphere inside the unit. The problem is, as you can imagine, this would be the back of the PlayStation here. You're going to want air to be pulling this direction out to pull the, air, the hot air out of the unit. But if you check this out, you can tell, obviously the guy on YouTube that I'll put the link below was correct, stating that this fan is sucking air into the PlayStation, which is not what you want. You can see in the back it's blowing it, right? So as I stated, we're going to do a video. We'll just try to open it up real quick by removing some of these screws. We'll turn the three fans around inside if it's possible and uh, open some of these ports up a little bit better to see if we can truly get these things spin the opposite direction and see if we can extract some hot air out of the unit. All right, so I went ahead and loosened up these uh, two, four, six, eight screws in the back of the unit. So I'm go ahead and dump these out here, so we can keep track of them. And as you can tell, this comes apart quite easy. Got your three small fans and your one larger fan here. Now, like I said, I don't even know if it's possible to unsnap these and turn them around, but I don't see why it wouldn't be. So we can go ahead and unplug this to get this out of the way. Okay. Let's see if these just slide off, right? Turn them around. Plug this back in real quick just to make sure it's going to work. Temporarily put this back in place. You know what? Let's just turn these around this way. Get a little bit longer extension on these cables. And of course it's just a temporary fix, but you know, it's all said and done, these wires will be out of the way. I just want to see if we plug it back in and we can get the airflow going the right way. Let it get up to speed. You can see now, it's not mind-blowing, but the air is blowing the proper direction now with the simple eight screws and flipping the fans around. What we'll do now is to allow for even more airflow. I'm just going to find a way to see if we can maybe just use a hole saw or a unibit or something and just kind of cut these open a little bit more. It won't be as aesthetically pleasing, but you don't really see it on the back of the PlayStation anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and cut both these sides out on both sides and see if we can get just as much um, air flowing through this thing as possible. All right, so what we have here is a unibit or some people call it a step bit. 
and I'm just going to, as I stated, just simply see if I can drill through these holes. I don't need to make it the full size, but just something to get rid of some of these grates. Let's give it a shot. Hopefully I don't mess this up. As you can see, it's just snapping them off, so that's fine. What I'll probably end up doing, actually, now that I've seen how that works, is just go ahead and cut these out with a razor blade or something that's going to give me a smoother, cleaner uh, cut on both these holes on both sides of the unit. So the razor blade didn't work too good. I ended up just uh, sticking with the step bit, and you can tell, i got to clean it up a little bit, but if you just keep going through, it ends up just snapping all these little uh, fins off, and you can kind of work the, the step bit around. Uh, in a circular pattern to, to break it up. See? So it comes around, just kind of turn it over. There you go. So all I'm going to do is the same thing to the other side and I'll take some sandpaper and we'll just clean up the edges so no debris flies inside the PlayStation when these fans kick on. One thing to mention, when you're working on this part of the unit, when you look at uh, turn it over on the inside, you don't want to break these tabs off as that's where the uh, electric fans are going to attach to. So be careful when you're drilling through this direction or even here with your step bit that you don't snap these four um, the brackets off. So we're all done drilling now. You can see it's still got a rough edge, but we have opened up these ports as much as possible. Now I know some people will probably bitch and complain and say that we don't have a protective guard in front of these electric fans anymore, but it might be different for some people. I don't have kids or animals running around the back of this unit, so I can care less. No one's going to be messing with it once they're cleaned up. It's on the back of the PlayStation tucked away in a cabinet, so I don't see any issues there. And let's be honest, dust is still going to get sucked through those holes, so they weren't really there for anything other than just to uh, impede the airflow. We'll check back in after we've sanded it up a little bit. Alright, so I just got some sandpaper here, and I'm just going to put into the holes and just simply smooth it up a little bit. Check back in when it's all done and show you what it looks like. Alright, so not 100% there, but you can tell it's just been sanded off, so now the edges are all smooth and clean on the inside. So, like I said, um, you know, I just want to make sure you wipe these off real good so any residual, you know, clippings or anything doesn't get sucked into these fans or your PlayStation, even though your PlayStation should be blowing air out the opposite way. But uh, just clean it up the best you can, and uh, we're going to start reassembling this unit now. Alright, so we'll start with the smaller fans at the top. Put them on. As you can see now, they're secured by those four posts we were talking about. And if all works out, we should have a lot better airflow than with those huge grates that were blocking it on both uh, sides of the fan. Just try to hold these wires out of the way. It's so like we said earlier that you don't want to have these impeding any of the airflow. So we're going to go ahead and move these. Let's see, I think this unit actually goes this way. You want the longest wire at the top so it can reach down to the controller. I should put these in better order on my workbench. Start like that. Put the bigger unit down here at the bottom. wires out of the way. Alright, 
So we've got all three fans back in the unit now. Large fan, two small fans, all reversed from the original manufacturer's orientation. You can see we've got the larger holes cut now. Only downside I can see is you don't have any protection from these fans, but unless you're sticking a pencil or something stupid in here, you're not going to have any issues with it, especially on the back side of your PlayStation when it's tucked away in a cabinet. So let's set this down. We've got our controller here with the power switch and the USB. We can go ahead and wire up all of our... Um, let me move this here so you can see better. Let me go ahead and take the largest fan uh, wire plug it into this unit here and the two smaller fan wirings into here and flip this over line it up and it all seats properly. There, so when you flip it around, you get your power button and your USB. And there you go. So now we are going to just have to tuck these wires in a way that they're not going to uh, impede circulation or get in the way of the holes that we cut out. So you just try to tuck these wires along the side of the fan here. Alright, I'm gonna get a tool to like a little flathead screwdriver or something to pop these down. Be right back. Okay, so like I said, I just used a small little flathead screwdriver to carefully uh, pinch the wires in between the fans here so that way nothing's overlaying the fans. So now, simply pop this guy back over the unit and I'll go ahead and screw these screws back in. We'll plug it back into the wall and see if we truly have uh, a little bit better airflow with the uh, tissue paper. Alright, here's the end result. The unit is all reassembled. The eight screws are back in. The USB ports are looking good. You got your power switch here and the fans should now be reversed. So we're going to go ahead and plug this in to our outlet and see if we have a little bit better airflow from the original test. So again, remember that the PlayStation will be against the wall here and I can already feel a major difference in air movement here and it is in fact blowing towards my hand. I'll go ahead and put this up here and you can see the difference in airflow, even up top, it's blowing the tissue further back than it was originally. Put on the air side, sucks to it. So that's what you want. You want this thing blowing, or I guess you can call it sucking air out this direction from the back of the PlayStation 5. So I'll go hook it up to the back of the PlayStation and uh, roll with it. Alright, so now we've got the fan on the back of the PlayStation unit. And uh, we've been playing for a while to get the unit pretty hot just to see if we can feel some hot air coming out. And as you can see, it's on the back of the unit. It's powered up. I'm sure you can hear it. It's quite loud. The only way to fix that, unfortunately, is to get a pair of these, I guess. But can't really do much about the sound. But you can definitely tell there is a tremendous amount of uh, airflow compared to the original design on here. So I'll get the... Uh the tissue paper again and you can see that it blows away pretty good right now so I know I can't really represent without a thermometer here of how the hot air is coming out but you can definitely feel the difference 
So I recommend uh, doing this build. It takes about five minutes and it's well worth it. Let me know what you think in the comments.